All right, fellas, what's up? So I had a genetics video where I was going to talk to you about the different things you can be good or bad at. But honestly, bro, I saw something on Instagram that infuriated me, to be honest, and it just completely overrided anything that we're going to talk about. I'll still make that video. But it's just the unthinkable things that people mess up on where their mindset or their process isn't right. They just keep your progress limited. First and foremost, bro, what infuriated me, all right? It's just this age old saying where people say motivation is overrated. Discipline is what you know propels you and what carries you throughout your training or any fucking thing that you do in your life. Let me tell you something, bro. Track back to a year and a half ago. You remember that interview that I did with Alex where he asked me what my name was or something to introduce myself to y'all? I didn't even hear what he said to me, bro. My motivation was through the roof. My test was through the roof because I had an opportunity to tell young men that their potential is unlimited and they're you're capable of so much more than they think they are. I said, bro, he asked me, hey, bro, what's your name? Tell us a little bit about yourself. First and foremost, bro, there is no natural limit. That is the most anabolic thing that could have came out of my mouth. Motivation is very important. Discipline is great, but discipline is not gonna get you in the gym doing shit that you hate. It's not gonna get you in life doing things that you hate. There has to be an underlying love for things that you do that don't, you know, outside of work, like you have to work, you have to go to work, you have to pay the bills, so on and so forth. But for you to do something like lifting or any athletic endeavor, there has to be a love for it and you have to love your process. Seeking motivation is what allows you to love that process. Being motivated to do exercises that you love is going to allow you to adhere better to your process. This just, you know, it segues into something else wherein the way that we talk about ourselves is important. And this is the second thing that limits people. It, it really bothers me. Not so much when people call fellas fake natties, but to be honest with you, that's a compliment. Like you shouldn't take that personally. It's the underlying self-deprecation that comes into play with that. When you do that, when you call someone a fake natty, first and foremost, you're calling them a liar, which I guess is an insult, but you're saying that they're jacked and what they're doing is completely unachievable by you, even though it is completely and reasonably un you know, obtainable by you. When you do that, like I said, you put yourself in this glass box wherein you're only capable of so much. And even worse than that is when we see ladies out here doing shit like squatting 400 pounds, deadlifting over 500 pounds. And we say just the, the nasty, weird shit that I read sometimes is just baffling. Don't put people above you like that. You know what happens when I see a natty stud out here getting it, bro? I'm like, dude, I want to do that too. It fires me up. It motivates me. Everything comes into play with the way that we think about ourselves. The mind is a very powerful thing. You're not going to tell me, just honestly, bro, no bullshit, that a guy that thinks he genuinely has no limits, like he's going to make gains, however slow, until the day that he dies, you're not going to tell me a fella like that is going to get the same results as someone that thinks that like, yeah, there's a hard limit, bro. I'm just going to fight hard for every little scrap of gains I'll maybe get. No, there's a huge difference between the two. And I genuinely believe that is the difference between people naturally or unnaturally or whatever the hell that make great year over year progress and the fellas that struggle to do anything remotely impressive. The third unthinkable thing that just, you know, it's more so like if you don't know, you don't know. We, we have a tendency to look at things that we're bad at and just completely ignore the gift that comes with the curse. With every curse, there comes a gift, bro. There's going to be some benefit to what you think is a detriment. Let's just talk about genetics, for example. That's what I'm referring to. Limb links specifically. So fellas with long limbs love talking about how like they can't get jacked. Their arms will never get filled out. Their legs will never get filled out. They'll never bench press above two plates when they don't stop to think that their long limbs come with so many advantages. Many things that we complain about aren't hard limits. Track back to what we just talked about. There are no fucking limits. They're just rules with how we must engage with exercise or anything that we do with life. So if you're someone with long limbs, for example, we'll talk about that in the bench press. Yeah, someone with shorter limbs is absolutely going to be you know, more adept at bench press than you naturally. It is what it is. But one, you get more range of motion than they do, which is excellent for hypertrophy. Two, you're moving the weight through over twice the range of motion a lot of the time. If you shove a circle into a square hole, you're gonna have a fuck of a time trying to get that circle through that square hole, bro. Put the circle through a circular hole, man. It's not rocket science. Play by the rules 
A lot of things that you think you're bad at or actually have a ton of benefits that come with them or intrinsic advantages that come with them. And that's a video that you know, after I get this rant out of my system, I swear I'm going to make that video. It'll be like 20 genetic advantages that you can have or something like with a cool thumbnail. Moving on. I want to circle back to that point that we made, you know, where people just they look at someone who's a natty stud out here getting it and they have all this negative shit to say. I'm not going to expound upon that too much more. I'm going to give you, you know, a piece of wisdom that an old head gave to me a long time ago. And I'm going to paraphrase it, you know, put my old little lingo on it. But basically, the fellow said that people love you up until the extent that you're doing better than they are. And then they start to resent that. Let's not look at people that are doing better than us and resent them for it or hate that we're not getting the results that they are. Here's another quote that I'm going to paraphrase because I don't know the exact quote, but, you know, Champions come in pairs of two, battle each other to perfection. You want to be a champion. You don't want to be a fucking chump. Chumps hate people for being great. Chumps resent people for getting results. They resent themselves for not getting the results that other people do. Do the best that you can. I don't know how that goes, bro. Some some genius in the comments can put the exact quote down and I'll, I'll, I might pin it or something. Unless someone says something funny, then I'll pin the funny comment. Look at my neck and my traps. Like, my neck is over 18 inches now. It's like 18 and what's half of a half, a quarter. It's like 18 and a quarter inches now. It was 18 inches a few weeks ago. Dude, you, you're capable of some extraordinary shit, even if you don't think you are, man. So just push your limits and see where you get with shit, man. It, it's, it's an incredible and really, really rewarding experience. And yeah, it's, oh, it's easy to say that. You're fucking jacked or blah, blah, blah. Listen, man, like, let me tell you something. I was obese as a child. If I was 10 to 14 again, like a, a young a young man, and I could see myself now and just see like the, the, the bulging neck and traps, the bulging chest and shoulders, the superhero physique that I have, dude, I would be fucking amazed. And you'll never know what you're capable of unless you attack these things in earnest. And that you tell yourself that, dude, honestly, I'm a fucking genetic phenom. My test is through the fucking roof. I'm capable of, you know, if I want to walk over to that building right now and kick it down, if I wanted to do that, I could do that. We have to talk about ourselves like we're champions. It really helps a lot, man. Now, y'all know me, man. I'm, I'm not, I can't stay mad for long. I do have some, that was practical advice, but it was more so along the lines of mindset. I'm going to talk about some practical, like things that you can start doing with your training. They just, you know, fall outside of the realm of which exercises we pick in programming. Having a logbook, whether it's a physical logbook or, you know, a cool workout app that you have. You know, special announcement about that coming soon, by the way. But having something that you can go into that allows you to stay focused with your plus ones, adding exercises, how exercises feel, taking notes about, you know, I feel achy or this felt really good, or this combination with this rest period felt really good. This is what allows you to refine your process. And I genuinely believe that either keeping a physical logbook and or having a cool workout app that can allow you to do those things will propel you so much further than you just, you know, off memory and being like, yeah, dude, I did this much last time. I'm gonna do a little bit more than, than I did last time. I did these exercises. It also keeps you accountable with doing everything on your program as well. Dude, especially if you have a notebook, like you're the motherfucker that's going in that notebook, writing in your handwriting. Yeah, I skipped this shit. You know how much of a fucking shit bag you'll feel like if you if you repeatedly go into your notebook and you, you freaking see that you skipped something. You're not going to keep doing that. You're going to do that once and be like, dude, I got to I got to do that next time. I can't recommend it enough. Speaking of one more thing that is just, you know, super common, it's unthinkable. Dude, hard gainers, listen up. This is for you especially. Number one, I eat a lot more than most of y'all probably do, unless like you're like a really heavy guy or a really big eater, all right? I eat like 3,500 calories a day, mostly clean food. One thing that really helps me do that, and you know, it just does so much, bro. It's like magic, all right? I talked about this on the Berserk Method 2023. I'm gonna talk a lot about it a little bit more here, along with like things that you can ensure with your digestion, you know, to make sure that you're actually able to digest your food and eat it. I eat during my training sessions, number one, because it's an easy way to sneak in a few hundred to several hundred calories into your training 
where you're otherwise not eating. It's a couple hours where dude, you're just not eating. So if you're a hard gainer that swears up and down, I can't eat another bite. Well, how about when you're training? Can you drink a Gatorade and have a banana or have like a freaking, what are those tasty Gatorade bars? What, what does uh, Rick the Stick talk about these days? The freaking fanny pack of uh, chocolate chip cookies and fig bars. You can't suck down a couple fig bars while you train, get in 300, 400 calories. You absolutely could. And if you start doing that, that 300 to 400 calories is all you need in the first place to be in a surplus. So if that is what literally separates you from being in a surplus, Dude, doing that is going to allow you to start making gains and adding your plus ones again if you reach the plateau. That's that dietary box that we have to make sure that we always do our best in checking, especially, dude, if you're strong. Dude, if you're an advanced athlete, whether that's in weightlifting, powerlifting, or bodybuilding, the better you get, the more important it is that you're on top of your shit. So let's stay on top of our shit and make shit easy. That's an easy way to go about doing it. Now, calorie surplus aside, Eating when you train also ensures that if you're doing a lot of volume like you will be to get better, if you're doing a lot of intensity like you will be to get better, hopefully you're training hard, having steady energy throughout that training session is a game changer. We all have that point in our training program where we're like, dude, today for me specifically, it was like, did my hack squats, ATG hack squats with a tempo. Then after that, I did freaking ATG leg press then I did my freaking triceps, and then I was going into my ring push-ups, and I'm like, dude, by the way, dude, sandbag on the dome, like on the neck, is like the best way to load your your uh, ring push-ups, in my opinion. Like, it just, the sand morphs to your dome. I'm gonna make a video about that, I swear, all right? I'm gonna write it down so I don't forget. But I reached, I reached that point in my training where I'm like, dude, I wanna go home. I'm out, I'm zapped, I'm out of energy. I just destroyed, laser targeted my legs and just beat the crap out of my arms, did abs, the whole nine, my neck. What did I have? I had an electrolyte drink, I had a protein shake, and I had a tasty cereal bar. Got in about four, 500 calories, dude. Energy boosted. Started crushing ring pushups. Got in five quality sets of weighted ring pushups good quality squeeze at the top, good quality stretch at the bottom. And I was fired up, I did my freaking lateral raises. And I, I succeeded in fulfilling my training and not only in maintaining that intensity, but that level of volume that I was looking to hit as well. So not only does it allow you to be in a calorie surplus, but it also allows you to have steady energy throughout. Now, one last thing, the digestion before I forget, we don't wanna rely at least completely on dirty foods for our calorie surplus. Dirty food is like a tool. You use it if you need to train yourself to eat a certain amount of calories. But the better you get, again, the more you wanna ensure that most of these calories are coming from high quality foods so that you have steady energy throughout the day. So that you don't crash at night or get super fucking hungry at night and then overeat or that you don't recover because you're not digesting the food well so you get sick. All of these things get very common for people that, you know, transcend from beginner into intermediate and especially into advanced. So an easy thing to ensure that we're not fucking, we have bubble guts and mud butt is that we just eat high quality foods. Now you're going to have those particular foods that you eat that maybe are too high in fiber, too high in dairy, whatever. Avoid those and eat the whole foods that don't make you feel like you have to shit through every orifice in your body. That'll allow you to, again, reach your calorie goal sustainably and have sustainable energy. But that's all she wrote, fellas. Like I said, I just wanted to come out here and, and, and rant to you a little bit. Uh, needed to get that off my chest. We have to do better as standards raise and you see people do amazing things. All you have to do is come with me, bro. You trust in me and my information and the people that are, you know, that I call colleagues and friends. Dude, we all have your best interests in heart in terms of the training aspect of things. We're gonna tell you exactly how to get jacked and do the things that we're doing. Dude, I put out the Berserk Method 2023 complete for, completely for free. I wanna be that bridge between people that wanna be great, but don't know what the fuck they're doing. I would have loved to have that resource starting off of my training. And there's gonna be a fella that absolutely is gonna be the next, you know, big icon on social media or athlete or whatever 
that is going to encounter information or information of that caliber because greatness build, breeds greatness. Someone that watched that video is going to go on and want to do that same thing for others. So someone is going to come across something of that caliber and become great for, from it. And that's what my goal is. But anyway, I don't want to talk your ear off. I got to fucking eat. I've only had a I've pretty much only had that tasty cereal bar, electrolyte drink, and whatever else, what else the fuck I ate when I trained besides some little bit of Italian wedding soup. So I gotta get it. I gotta get in some food, bro. I'm hungry. I'm just, I didn't get in the shower. I just fucking trained. But the mutant natty training talk and the natty spirit possessed me. So I wanted to get this one out to you. Watch these videos now that you've watched this one. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a good day.